Good morning, everyone. Uh, well, this is the second day of our academic conferences at CBA La Paz. Today, I'm going to introduce our dear colleague and a friend from CBA Tarija, Paola Valdez Donaire. Paola Alejandra Valdez Donaire graduated from Juan Misael Saracho Autonomous University, language career with fluency in English, French, Portuguese, and Spanish, as well as academic training in the area of tourism and translation, actively participating in academic activities related to ESL and psychology of learning. Welcome uh, to this wonderful event, dear Paola. Um, well, the, the topic for today is Emotions Matter. Okay, thank you, Daniela. So it's a very, very big pleasure to be here in academic conferences. This is actually my second year participating in such a big event, which I really feel familiar with. And I'm so glad to be here in front of, I don't know how many people right now, but uh, for sure it's gonna be a productive session. So let's start. Thank you. That's for sure. Okay, I will leave you with your audience, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so everyone, today it's gonna be uh, a nice session. And you know why? Because I decided um, not to talk about tips for teaching, not, you know, the most common thing. I decided to focus on something specific, which is called emotions matter, as you probably read on the title. So first of all, it's, um, I was so close to say students. I'm so like programmed to say students every time. But in this case, dear colleagues, um, you know, I was uh, thinking when, when I received this invitation, I was thinking about what can I talk about in, in this conference? And you know, something that really touched my heart and came into my mind was two months ago, we usually, after finishing every module at my job, as, as Daniela mentioned, I work at the CBA Tarija. So um, we had a meeting and on that module, I don't know, but some problems happened with some students and um, in general, I mean, in all the institution. And what happened was that um, my, my directors were mentioning, hey, teachers, you have to teach in this way, you have to do this. Uh, students sometimes are, uh, are motivated, so you need to motivate them. And, you know, a lot of things that teachers, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to behave like this, you have to behave like that, you have to consider this, you have to upload the grades, you have to you know, and I was becoming crazy. And and then one teacher said, he stand up and he said, and what about teachers? What about us? We live in a, in a world of uh, virtual education where the teacher is asking every time to do something, to do this, to do that, to, you know, to create, to, to be very, very creative every time we are, um, we are teaching so that's why i said no wait students matter but we teachers too so that's why let me introduce you my presentation i got here Okay, and and and, uh, and I was telling, as I was telling you, I decided that I need to do something refer to teachers' emotions more, most properly, more properly, and that's why I'm here. I'm I'm gonna explain uh, you this topic. Um, you know, what? First of all, we need to know how emotions affect at the moment of teaching. How emotions create like a nice or a very bad environment in our class. First of all, we are going to divide this class and, and first of all, we are going to talk about just teachers, okay? Just teachers uh, or people who teaches 
I don't know in, in what institutions you, you work. If you let me know in the comments, I will be glad to read yours. And well, so uh, we need to be uh, conscient that emotions has uh, emotions have a very big impact on everyone's life. Not just people who teach, no, nothing like that. But, you know, many of us are facing challenges that can be stressful, overwhelming, and cause strong emotions in adults and children. So everyone is in the, everyone is in the same back. Everyone is facing uh, with, uh, with emotions, uh, issues with emotion troubles, but you know, uh, in different levels, probably, and well, so that's why it makes a very, very, uh, the same common problem in every one of us. So, um, you know, when, when I was thinking about my reality related to emotions, I was thinking about the, the, the following situation. Um, some time ago, I faced uh, something that was uh, really uh, sad for me uh, a time when I was exposed to so, so much pressure and I really didn't know how to balance my life. Um, I am an independent person. I am not married. I don't have children. But even though I, I was just focusing on my job and doing, uh, you know, the common to-do list that I have to. And in that time, I was kind of becoming crazy with a lot of things, sleeping so, so few and not taking so much time with my family, not taking a good... Um, uh, healthy elements you know it was like a mess my life was like a mess and I said hey I need to stop this otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna become crazy I cannot continue with this lifestyle because my life matters too so it, it made me think that uh, these pictures identifies me so much because I was spending morning afternoon night on just doing this and my common thing of every day was my to-do list. Students, family, kids. Well, in my case, as I previously told you, I, I don't have kids. But, you know, students, if you can see, students are in my, in my first category of priorities. And I said, why my time and my life is all the time around students, around my job, and, and I'm becoming, you know, this is affecting me so much. So I need to stop. And through my experience is that I want to share with you. Um, one of the things that makes me, uh, that made me worry so much was my health problems I was facing with. You know, um, before my health problems, I started feeling uh, anxiety so much stress and sometimes I was like I couldn't stand one more minute in front of a computer talking with people that I even don't know if they were listening to me you know I know we are we teachers are full of experiences about these virtual classes funny experiences you know different situations and one of the things on that days when I was facing like oh so much things was that um, I was teaching, I prepare a very nice class. My planning was, okay, the next, the next thing I have to do is, is play in this game. And then I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to teach the grammar. So everything was organized. And you know what? One of my students forgot the, the well, I suppose he wanted to turn, uh, turn off the camera, but he let it, uh, he let it on. And you know, he was sleeping in the class. He was in the bed and the cell phone was that. And, and I was like, I saw it. And I really felt so sad. And I said, hey, I plan a class. I, I, I did everything to give them a good class. And you know what? He is sleeping in my class. How is it possible? He told me that he had um, K 
camera's problems, so he couldn't turn it on. So he told me that uh, he's going to buy a new cell phone. But picture for these days, it was like three days, to let him stay with the camera off. And I said, okay, so if, if your cell phone is not working, so it's okay, so don't worry, but try to try to solve this problem. And he said, he told me, okay, teacher, no, no problem. I'm gonna solve it. And then when I saw this, this is saying when I saw him laying on the on the bed, not paying attention to me, I, I almost cried because you know it was though one of those days when we feel like tired. And then I said, okay, okay, it's it's normal to happen this, so let's move on. Then some days later, I used to have another student, and, and this is some uh, other of the situations that made me feel very sad. I was explaining everything, and I tried to be comprehensive with them because as we, I know that they are also facing, I don't know, I don't know what kind of situations. So I tried to be comprehensive. And when a student told me, teacher, hey, sorry, I, I'm having some uh, connection issues. So please, if, if you don't listen to me clearly, it's because I am very far from the city. And that's the problem. It's not that I am not paying attention. And I say, OK, so it's OK. And then the same situation, she let the cameras on. Well, in this case, she was not on the bed, but she, were, she was on the gym. She was in the gym, you know, exercising in the class. And I said, mm -mm -mm, something has to change here. These things, uh, colleagues, made me feel that this situation, this whole and complete situation of teaching online has affected us a lot emotionally. It's not the same to be in front of them ask them how, what is happening with you or see if they are paying attention or not then uh, being in front of a machine so it will never be the same but we have to deal with this with you know we probably became kind of experts on these situations but what about the emotions now i would like to share um i would like to share um a link and I will please ask you to click on the link. It's right here. Sorry. Okay, so please, can you click on the link I I sent you, and, and can you tell me, please, if you can see? Just show me a thumbs. Okay. Okay. Okay, I I shared a link. I don't know if everyone can see it. Um, I don't think so. Pao, maybe you can send it to me and I can post it on the WhatsApp chat. I mean, on the on the YouTube chat. Okay, Dani. Okay, we, in the meantime, we're waiting for the link. Um, Paolita will send it to me and I will share it on the YouTube chat, okay? Okay, I send it to your private. Okay. Can you see it? Mm, let me check. Oh no, I, I didn't get it yet. Um, well, we, in the meantime, we're waiting for the, the link. 
Let's say that yes, um, there are many times in which we we felt that way, that the way that you said that uh, we as teachers know, right? That is very frustrating. Okay, and well, that's very frustrating, but we don't have to feel disappointed. I mean, there is something that we have to change, right? Uh, okay, I'm going to share the link that Pao sent me on the YouTube chat. Please take a look at it, okay? We are using Mentimeter, okay? But you just have to click on the link and you will be able to see. Okay, thank you, Paul. So let's wait for people to join the link. And we will see. Okay, so. Okay, so if if you click on the link, so now you are probably on this Mentimeter slide. And here I have a question and it says, what's the most common emotion feeling you face with? Okay. Some of you says anxiety, frustration, frustration. What else? Stress. Good. Anger, disappointment. Yes. Doubt, overwhelmed, expectation, feel sad, boring, happiness, tiredness. Okay. Okay, so reading your your feelings makes me think that we are on the same way and we are, you know, feeling the same. We are not alone. Bliss. I feel sad, boring, doubt, tiredness. Hope. Okay. Let's see how this three word it's it's getting bigger and bigger okay Paulita, maybe you can show the results on your screen. Maybe you can present your screen and we can see the results as they appear. Yeah, I, I am showing. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Okay, so now we are going to present. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so as you can see on my screen, I'm sharing your answers. Okay, and there are a lot of them that I, me, I feel, sorry, I feel identified too. It says nostalgic, tiredness, expectation, stress, happiness, anxiety, tiredness, frustration, overwhelmed, disappointed, sad, boring stress hope expectation disappointed fear boredom fortune and grateful shy demotivation happiness anger frustration sadness oh wow a lot of things that everyone is feeling at the moment you know of facing this reality uh of of uh teaching and and you know something that i want to to take it from all of your, from all of the, the, the feelings that you are writing, is that most of you described the things that we faced with. So it means like the problems or, or this difficult situations we are constantly facing with, right? In here, I see like 
um, like three positive feelings, which is happiness, uh, grateful. I don't know, I read another word. Okay, so I read like two, three words, positive words, that makes me think that even though this very big mountain of negative things we sometimes experience, there is always something positive. There is always something good. So, but now, let's see. Uh, we talked about um, frustration, stress, anxiety, but we not just knowing that this is bad. We have to be conscious about how these things might affect us. So uh, this is not just in the mind. No, this is not just in the mind. It's also in the body. And we are going to see this. So, and that's why um, I was telling you that it also affects our bodies. In what way? So not just mental, but it is also in, reflected in our body. All those things that you mentioned on, on the Mentimeter, uh, frustration, stress, anxiety, anger, sad, all those things has an effect in our body, in our physical body. What are some of the effects of of, of, of feeling or sad or facing with negative emotions is that it, especially the stress, uh, reduce uh, the concentration, decrease mood, fatigue. It also changes the skin texture, loss the skin tone, loss of moisture, thinner and more delicate skin. Then what about uh, narrowing of arteries, increased blood glucose. So have you ever imagined that stress or uh, worriedness can, can be causing all those damages in our body? Yeah, also decreased nutrient absorption, alterations in gut motility, changes in microbiome, leak good, leaky good, and decreased immunity or hormonal uh, imbalances, increased cortisol, and muscle protein breakdown. So sometimes we think that it's just about being positive and say, come on, my classes are so good. I'm going to take it. I'm going to rock. I don't know. Sometimes we, we try to be positive, and which is very good, which is the best medicine. But actually, um, on the other side, when we don't control the things, they are like in a very, very dangerous way. They are affecting our body, the complete body. And, and probably I am sure that, you know, most of you know and are conscient about this, right? Um, I was telling in the beginning that what motivated me to do this presentation was the real problems I faced with. I faced with and you know talking about all these effects on the body I could say that I started experiences headaches back aches and a lot of anxiety that was uh that was so sad and and I I I knew I had to change my habits my planning but you know what was my big problem the time so I said, I would like to do a lot of things. I would like to distract myself. I would like to, you know, to take more time for myself. But I can't. I have to do and I have to do and I have to do. My to-do list was every time bigger and bigger. And when we don't stop that, believe me, that there is always something extra that you will have to do. Sometimes we adapt to that rhythm that even if we don't have anything to do, our mind and our brain is working at the same time of the days that we have like thousand, thousand, thousand things to do. And so we are, you know, the mind is, is working, is working, it's, it's in circles and circles. 
and at the same routine, but you say, hey, today is Sunday. I have no class today. So let's just relax. But you know, we didn't adapt our brain to the, to the weekends. We just adapt our brain to the weekdays, which is a very, very dangerous mistake that we humans do. And it's not to divide the priorities and it's not to, to divide the days we have to. Well, so it brings me to the next step I want to share with every one of you. And it's how can I face my reality or face the reality? First of all, I want just to say some things that I know uh, most of you will say, yes, that's right. Or most of you will say, mm, really? I don't know. It's up everyone. So first of all, you are not a robot. You are a human. Sometimes when we, uh, when we plan uh, our classes and when we are in front of the computer, we really want to do perfectly. We really want to do everything exactly as it was in our mind. And you were thinking, okay, when I ask these questions, my students, when I say, uh, what's the most beautiful color? Everyone will say, or most of them will say that it is a purple. That's why my presentation is purple. And everyone is going to say it's purple. But what about if when you are in class and you say, hey, students, what's the most beautiful color? And some of them says, it's orange, it's white, it's yellow. And, you, and your plan is destroyed because you say, no way. I was supposing everyone will say it's purple. It's, it's, it's of course, it's purple. It's the best and it's the most beautiful color. But then it's when you have to be, um, you have to be conscious about our reality, that we are not robot and we cannot program. Uh, everyone is going to say what we expect to, or it's not going to be the class is not going to be as we want it to be. And it's on that time when we have to say, hey, stress, hey, frustration. No, you don't have a space in my mind. This is part of being a teacher. And I, am, I won't be disappointed because everything uh, didn't look as I was expecting to. So being a human, it's being conscious that uh, we do our best, but sometimes we don't get what we want. Okay, so you are not a robot, you are a human. Remember that and take it into your mind. Then neglecting your loved ones is a terrible mistake. I would like to ask you and let me know in the comments, how many of you have kids or how many of you are married? Because when we talk about neglecting your loved ones, uh, it's when we distribute priorities in a wrong way. If you remember when I when I showed you my to-do lists, students was in my first part. Students was my first my number one. Then it was my family, and then I wrote some other things, right? And you know why? Um, because sometimes we focus. Humans are like that. We focus on, on some specific thing. And we are working on the computer. And in my case, I live with my mom. So she said, she, I remember one day I was very uh, tired and I was working. And she told me, hey, lunch is ready. And I said, okay, so just give me a moment. I'm going to finish it and then I'm going to go. And, you know, I was working and working and I was so focused on my job, so focused on working. And then when I checked my clock, it was like half hour. And I, and I, when I went to the kitchen, my mom have already finished the lunch. And I felt so sad and I said, hey mom, do you wanna join me for the lunch? And she told me, when you organize your time in another way, stop going to check. And I was like, I was very, I was feeling really sad. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I just, no, I had a lot of things to do. And she told me, hey, you have to be careful because your obligations are taking the best of you. And when I heard that, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it. 
Thank you for telling me that. And then I realized that I was neglecting my loved ones, my family. Then I received messages from my friends. And, you know, when we don't divide priorities in our mind, when we don't organize things, when we don't divide job, family, friends, it's when we are slowly going into a big mistake that months, days, weeks, or years later are going to ask for the best of us. Okay, so don't neglect your loved ones because it's a really, really terrible mistake. Then something else we gotta do. Okay, I see some, okay, I see some comments. Uh, neglect, uh, sorry, planning and routines are almost always good. Planning and routines are almost always good. So um, you're doing, oh, sorry, I'm just going to jump to the next. Okay, I'm right here. Why do I say that uh, planning and routines are almost always good? Why do you think? Can you write why planning and routines are almost always good? So I would, I, I could say that planning and routines are always good. But in this case, I wanted to say that they are almost good. I would like to, to read some of your comments and realize why do you think I say almost? Let me see. Why do you think that uh, routines, planning are almost always good? Not always. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so while you are doing that, I will explain you. Because when we, when we say that our routines are always, okay, now I got some messages. Okay, thank you, Fabiola. She says, yeah, uh, uh -huh. Fabiola says, I really congratulate you on having chosen this topic to show us all that we matter, right? not only as teachers, but also as human beings, just like our students do. Maricela says you can follow steps, procedures, but sometimes we need different things in our lives. I think that's why almost, almost, almost. right? Not completely. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Lourdes says that she has two children. Ruben says that he doesn't like routines. Yeah. And I, I think those those are the comments from our audience. Okay, so dear Pao, okay, why did you say great. That? <laughs> okay, yeah, so okay. So then I really like the comment of here I have a Luis Fernando says life isn't a clock and agenda, and that's why and that's mm -hmm. where I wanted to go to. You know yeah. why? Because that's real, and, and that's exactly what I want to show you in this moment. Okay, keep on commenting, please. Okay, sure. We're going to interrupt. I will keep reading the comments then. Um, Luis Fernando says there are surprises sometimes. Yes, that's why life is in the clock or agenda. Pamela Pacheco says, sometimes unplanned things come out better. Alicia, because routines are good, but sometimes it's good to change activities from time to time. Beatriz says, if we plan our activities, we know what to do in advance. Lies, routines are not always the best option. Rocio says, I guess. Okay because sometimes you have to stop working on your CBA work to be a human being. 
And I guess we will receive okay. more comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, good. I'm so glad to to have your comments here. So um, as as we were talking about all these things, now we are going to go to a next question. I really hope everyone participated. So Danny, if you can share the the link I recently sent you. Okay, sure. One more comment from Paola. She says that because we cannot always control everything. Um, she says, and if we try to do it and things go wrong, we feel very frustrated and we can only control ourselves. Yes. Okay. Right now I'm going to share the link that Paulita sent. This is to another Menti presentation. So please click on the link and join. Okay, so as you receive the answers, Paulita, maybe you can share your screen. I'm going to help you with Okay, so we have a second question, and it says, what's the biggest thing you consider you have neglected in your life? We were talking about neglection to our loved ones, and then we were talking about why routines are not always good. So, but making like an analysis, what is the biggest thing or biggest things you consider you have neglected in your life? Okay, my health, my social life. Okay, keep on writing, please. And we are going to say we are going to check which one is the most common uh, thing we have neglected in our lives. Okay, I'm gonna keep on reading. And while you keep on writing them, it's social interactions, my dreamed occupation, social life, health, my health, my social life, enjoying my family time, family, myself, my family, my own space, self-love, my life, family time, Difficult question, says someone. Um, being punctual, exercising, family again, self love, family again, my life. Okay. So, all those things is, uh, I'm again, you know, I am like programmed like a robot. my own space, my life. Okay. Okay, so I could say the most common thing I am reading here is my family. Yes, it's absolutely the most common uh, yeah, it's the most common thing. The biggest thing you consider you have neglected in your life in this summary, as a summary, it's the family. And maybe you are thinking um, that this is something that it's happening to everyone, which shouldn't be, right? But it is a reality. So now how can I balance this? How can I face this reality? 
I'm going to read some more words that were added. Uh, again, social interactions. Okay, social is also very common on here. Family and social life. Yes. And a lot of you says uh, myself. Physical condition. Okay, so a big, big real receiving some more. Okay. Okay. Okay, and while reading your messages and also your Mentimeter words, that makes me think we are still on the same way. So let's go to the next part. I wanted to talk to you. Yeah, family and health. Some of you are, are using the chat and saying family and health. Okay, health, family. Okay, good. My kids. Yes, Beatrice, you are completely right. Right, kids grow up so fast and then we, we, we won't have that chance to share with them again. Good. Okay, so those things were affecting us so much and so uh, in a big area and probably the most important areas of our lives. And if we are conscient about how is stress, how uh, um, to-do lists are affecting our lives. Now, we have to take some step on in order to change this reality, not just facing it, but changing it. Um, and you have to remember that you are doing a great job even if you think you are not. I don't know how many of you, um, after every module or after uh, every semester, if you work at university, uh, how many of you receive like a rating from your students? Do you? Do you receive a rating from all the module, from all the semester? It's a kind of evaluation your students uh, give to you in order to, to give you a feedback about how they feel the, um, the module was. Do you? Do you receive that kind of, of feedbacks? So sometimes those feedbacks uh, can be something very positive and sometimes not at all. And something to remember is that we are not like, we are not gold for everyone. So everyone is not going to like our way of teaching, but that doesn't mean that we are doing it wrong. Um, a short experience I wanted to share with is that um, when we were in on face-to-face -face, uh, classes, uh, the day of the test, I suppose some of you will understand or probably you have the same system of evaluation. The last, uh, the final evaluation is taken by a different teacher. So I go to evaluate to a different class and that teacher comes to my class and that teacher is in charge of taking the, the rating teacher evaluation. And I remember that I, I used to share uh, classes with a lot of colleagues. And sometimes it's good to read the feedbacks that the students used to, used to make. But um, there was especially one, one of my dear colleagues. He used to be very dynamic with this students he was to be very very good with them like, like a friend not like a teacher like a real real good friend and you know he used to be on the on on, on the beginning of the class and after the class uh, surrounded by his students and and i always told him that hey you have a, such a nice connection with your students and <clears throat> it's, it seems they really really love you and he said, yeah, I, I won't say that they don't because we have a really nice relationship. And I said, that's good. That's really good for you. And in and, and some times I had to evaluate uh, his classes. And all the evaluations was, 
he is the best teacher. There is no better teacher on the CBA than him. And, you know, very positive comments. Uh, the teacher is uh, very dynamic. We love him. Like very, very big comments. And then uh, some time later, we have to change. We have to rotate classes. We finished some levels and then I had to change with some others. And you know, one of the classes that loved him the most uh, had to be mine. And I was very nervous because I read the previously comments that they said that he was the best teacher. Uh, he was so perfect. He was very dynamic. He was very funny and everything. And I know he, he was like that. And I was facing like, oh, I don't know, they are going to hate me because they love him, not me. And now I'm going to be his new teacher. I'm going to be their new teacher. When I started um, introducing myself, they were like, you know, on that negative attitude. And I say, okay, so we are going to start and we are going to do this. This module is about this. Welcome to the ne next level. And, you know, um, I knew that it would be a very hard work for me to to get the best from them because I was not the other teacher and and when I saw this situation I told them hey students as you know um and I asked one of them do you think you have the same personality than um than your father and she told me no my father is very strict that he he's old fashioned me on the contrary I am very open-minded, I'm very social. And I said, okay, thank you for your opinion. So the same as well, you and your father who lived all the life together, you are completely different. So me and the previous teacher, we are different people. I have a way of teaching, which is that I am for sure, I am giving my best to you. And I'm sure he, gi he gave his best to you but I really hope you, you can appreciate what I am doing. And if you don't, no matter, there is no, no problem. But take into, into account that everyone is giving its best. And then I started and I, and, and I started my own way. You know, everyone, every teacher has a unique form of being a teacher, right? We, fo we follow some rules in our institutions, but independently of that, everyone is unique so and they are starting um you know they are starting like okay teacher showing me like a more positive positive uh face and and i saw the tests were so good and you know the time happened so fast and it was more than four months that i spent with this team with this group and then it was time to to make another change of teacher and something that really filled my heart was that they made a letter to our directors to please ask for me to stay with them some more time. That was like the most precious, the most beautiful thing, the most beautiful present a teacher can receive. And you know why? Because I was being myself, not trying to imitate the best, considered for them the best teacher. No, I was just being myself. And being myself, you can win the hearts of your students, okay? And remember that that rating will never show you the real effort. The real effort is going to be uh, shown by the response of some students. And some of them, of course, are not going to respond on the way we are expecting to. But we have to have the peace of mind, the health of mind, that we are giving our best, okay? Being conscious that being in peace with yourself and with everyone that is in front of you, it's not just a peace of mind, but it's a, a, um, a healthy body and state. Okay. And this is going to bring me to something else I want to share with you. Oh, sorry. Let's go back. Um, uh, as, uh, as facing with all of these situations, I said, I have to change some things in my mind. And when I was reading in the Mentimeter, uh, a lot of you uh, said that one of the things that you neglected was your family time, your social life, and your the love for yourself. And me too. 
those three ones were the most common uh, things in personally in my life that I neglected. And I said, okay, it has to stop here. And I really hope colleagues today, if you are facing for the same situation I, I was, and I am sometimes am, um, I really hope you say, okay, today I have to start something different. Today is Monday. It's a good day to start something new, isn't it? Okay, so, and I decided, what do I like? How do I see myself in five years? Very stressed, living the same life I am doing right now? No, of course not. I wanna change in my life. I wanna experience new things. So you know what I decided to do? The following, this is me. Okay, so this is the way, one of the ways I found out in order to stop pressuring, to stop the stress and deciding to heal in myself, healing myself from the negative ideas, healing my body from the consequences of a stress. And I said, I want to try new things. I was kind of scared of trying like new things in this case. Why I decided to ride horses Ride horses was one of my my biggest decisions to do, and this is one of the things that I can't stop doing right now. And feeling the connection with nature, going out from my from my bedroom, from my house, from that walls, it's something really healer. Okay, I decided I want something different. I'm all every day. I'm in this same four walls. Um, going from my bedroom to the kitchen, to the living, to the bathroom, and I need to change that tour. So that's why I decided, I say, no, I need something different. Okay, what's that different thing for me? It's going on the countryside and riding a horse. I usually go to a ranch of my friends and I created a very bond of love and connection with horses. And I discovered, you know, this is something nice because I never knew this, but horses can um, feel how you feel. Isn't it crazy? But it's true. Uh, when they feel you are kind of a stress, it is represented on the way that you ride a horse. Riding a horse brought me and opened me, opened my mind so much that I discovered that the horse is can't talk but he can express me how i am feeling in that moment when i'm be when i'm feel very stressed so i i ride and and i put the saddle very like a tense and and the horse is is moving and it's showing me hey hey you are not doing it right and then i say okay relax and then the horse sometimes hugs me so it's something unbelievable but you know, this thing, and you can choose a lot of different things. I don't know how, what you love to do, but for sure, every one of you have and know a way of going out of the same everyday routine, okay? And the last, but hopefully not the least, is uh, thinking about our students. As we are very conscious about what we feel, so be conscious about what your students feel. And in all these conferences, as I was reading the titles of some uh, conferences, uh, a lot of them are teaching you how to teach, tips, what new technology tools to use. And we are constantly being uh, trained to be good teachers, to give good things to the students, but don't forget that we also matter our emotions matter. And that's why I wanted to share this presentation with you all. And I really, you, you, you like it. And I would like to know if, if you could have any questions. So please feel free to let me know everything you want to. And I'm, I'm gonna be greatly, um, I'm gonna feel so good to, to be able to answer them. 
Okay, thank you very much, Pao. Uh, you reminded us uh, about something very important that sometimes we forget, right? It's not everything about working or being good at teaching. And many people from the audience agree, right? There is, Ivan says, agree. Luis Fernando, wonderful experience. Karen, excellent topic. Paola, great presentation. Yamile, thanks to you. Miguel, great. Teresita totally agrees. Marisol says, really nice. Raquel says, thank you. Very nice topic. Carlita totally agrees. And Rocio says, eh, thank you very much for choosing this topic. Luis, thank you, and he agrees. Maria Teresa, thank you a lot, Pao. I really enjoyed your presentation. Juan Jose, nice presentation. Thank you, Paola. Carmen, thank you very much. Excellent. Lourdes eh, agrees with you. Maricela says, thank you. Nelson, thanks a lot. Ruben, it was a great presentation. Carlita, thanks a lot, really interesting. Cristina, thank you. Viviana, thanks for helping us remember what is really important. Pedro says the same. Thank you very much. Jose Luis, thank you very much for sharing. Aida, thank you. Wendy, thank you for the presentation and so on. A lot of people says thank you very much. Mayra, Monica, Tania, Tati. Okay, Paulita, well, uh, on behalf of the CBA, also thank you so much for being part once again of this event and reminding us about this important thing. I don't know if you want thank to say something else. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice comments. I'm not an expert, but I really try to talk from my heart, from my own experience to you. And I really hope these little uh, tips could help you to be more conscious about how valuable you are. And now through the shine is, is, is on my window. Uh, I would like to share, uh, Daniela is gonna share my email. If you have some question, maybe after this, or you want to share a coffee time with me, I don't know a virtual coffee time, or if someday you come to Tarija, welcome here and call me, contact me. We are going to sit down to take a nice coffee and talk about teachers, people, and family, and, and self-love, whatever you want, okay? So I don't know if you can Thank share you. it. Sure, I'm, I am sharing your email address on the YouTube chat box. There you go. Okay, Hello. so thank you so much and thank you for the invitation okay so see you in another opportunity dear pal okay, okay. thank you for attending this Bye -bye. session continue pal sorry no i was just saying my last goodbye so thank you thank you danny and thank you everyone okay thank you for attending this session and see you in the afternoon okay goodbye everyone